hi guys welcome once more to our youtube channel in today's video we are going to look at continue the curve sketching tutorial questions as you can see it is named part two for those who have not watched part one part one was basically um the solutions to june 2021 for that must be part two question nine it was detailed solved so i'm going to include the link to the to the video in the description and also in the comment section so that after watching this video you're going to watch it endeavor to subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed and for those who are subscribed we thank you so much for your subscription make sure you invite your friends you share with your friends so that they benefit also from our resources all right so in today's video we are going to be looking at exercise two for those who have watched part one you see that that was exercise one though it was june 2021 question nine of further math so this is exercise two since we are in part two and it is a northwest regional mock 2022 paper two specifically question number four so let's get started All right, so the question reads a real valued function is, is given by f of x equal to the lin of 2x minus 6 divided by x minus 1. Roman 1, 2 max, find the domain of f. Roman 2, which is allocated for 3 max, evaluate the one sided limits of f at the boundaries of its domain. Hence, state the equation of the three asymptotes to the curve y equal to f of x. Roman 3, find the coordinates of the points where y equal to f of x crosses a coordinate axis 2 max. Roman 4, which is 3 max, find f prime of x and explain why the graph y equal to f of x has no turning point. Roman 5, find the second derivative that is f double prime of x and explain why the graph of y equal to f of x has no point of inflection or has no inflection points. Roman 6, 2 max. Determine the intervals in which the domain in the determine the intervals in the domain where the graph is concave up or down. Roman 7. Determine the center of symmetry of the curve y equal to f of x1 mark. And finally, Roman 8. Sketch the curve y equal to f of x and it is allocated for 2 marks. Alright, so we are going to begin by looking at the solutions to the first four parts, that is Roman 1. Roman 2, Roman 3, and Roman 4. So stay tuned as you watch. Alright, so let's begin with Roman 1. It's asking us to find the domain of definition of a function y equal to f of x. Now, the domain of definition of a function in variable x is or is the set of values of x for which that function is defined or for which the function exists. Now, this is the link function and when is this link function set to exist first if the interior is defined and when the interior is positive when the interior is positive the link of a positive number will exist now for the interior to be defined the denominator should be different from zero now we solve both inequalities and we take the intersection on the number line so solving the first inequality this is solving of inequalities now that is for pure math students so solving the first inequality, we get this solution set. You look for the critical value, you put on the normal line, you get this. Now solving this second in equation, you just get x is different from 1. So if we put it on the normal line and we take the intersection, we get the domain of definition of our function x, of our function f, to be this set. x belongs um, from negative infinity to 1, then from, from 3 right up to positive infinity. That's the domain of definition of f. Like in the first video, I said that it is always good to write your domain of definition in the interval notation because from there it is going to be easier to identify the the the, the, the bounds of the boundaries of the domain. Roman two theorem max is asking us to evaluate the one-sided limits of f at the boundaries of its domain, and then we state the equation of the three asymptotes of the curve y equal to f of x. So, the sided limit, we have the limit as x tends to 1 from below and the limit as x tends to 3 from above. The limit as x tends to 1 from below of the function is positive infinity. 
the limit as x tends to 3 from above of the function is negative infinity. So, we, we also know that what the limit as x tends to plus or minus infinity is lean 2. Because as x tends to plus or minus infinity, the integer here tends to 2. Therefore, the, the function is tending to the lean of that 2. So, if you watch the first video, we, we explained why um, how to get the, the asymptotes that is the horizontal, the vertical and the slant asymptote. So here we are just with vertical and horizontal. So since the limit as x tends to 1 from below of the function is plus infinity, then the line x equal to 1 is a, is a vertical asymptote. Since the limit as x tends to 3 of the function is negative infinity, then the line x equal to 3 is a vertical asymptote and since the limit as x tends to plus or minus infinity of the function is the lean of 2 then the lean of 2 is the horizontal asymptote so the three the three asymptotes are 1 x equal to 1 x equal to 3 and y equal to 2 specifically x equal to 1 x equal to 3 are the vertical asymptotes and y equal to lean 2 is the horizontal asymptote Alright, Roman Pivot is asking us to find the coordinates of the points where the function crosses the coordinate axis. So when x is equal to 0, our y is equal to f of 0 which is lean 6. When y is equal to 0 crosses the coordinate axis, we just need to find the intercept in the x and the y axis when x is 0 and when y is 0. So when x is 0, we get y to be lean 6. When y is 0, we solve the equation the lean of 2 x minus 6 on x minus 1 equal to 0 and we are going to get x is equal to 5 after solving so we can conclude that it crosses at the point when x is 0 y is lean 6 so we have this first point and then when y is when x is 5 y is 0 we have the second point those so those are the two points where the, where the graph y equal to f of x crosses the coordinate axis roman 4 is asking us to first of all find f prime of x and then we explain why the function f of x has no turning point and is allocated for 3 max. So we have been given your f of x as the lean of 2x minus 2x minus 6 over x minus 1. So we can simplify it like this into the lean of 3 because up here, sorry, actually the lean of 2, sorry, because up here we can we can factor out 2. So we are we are going to get 2 into x minus 3 all divided by x minus 1 so it is going to give us the lean of 2 plus the lean of x minus 3 minus the lean of x minus 1 after using the loss of logarithm so differentiating the function we differentiate the lean of 2 sorry it's supposed to be the lean of 2 not the lean of 3 differentiating the lean of, of it's a constant so it gives us 0 now we differentiate the lean of x minus 3 we differentiate the interior and we divide by the interior Differentiating x minus 3, we get 1 and we divide by x minus 3. Minus differentiate the lean of x minus 1, we do the same thing. We simplify, that is, we bring them together and we get 2 over x minus 1 times x minus 3. That is the, the first derivative. Now, at the turning point, that first derivative is equal to 0. So, we are supposed to explain why there is no turning point, meaning we are supposed to explain why this first derivative can never be 0. Because for turning points, to exist not then that's that first derivative must not be zero so we clearly see that one so basically if the ratio between two things if the ratio if a, if a ratio is zero then the numerator of that ratio should be zero and the denominator should not be zero so if something over something um, equals equates to zero then just what is in the numerator should be zero but in this case what do we see we see that the numerator of our of our first derivative is 2 and 2 is different from 0 hence we conclude that what that there is no turning point since this guy here can never be 0 so that is the explanation all right so let's go to the next four parts which is Roman 5 Roman 6 Roman 7 and Roman 8 but let's begin with Roman 5 we are supposed to find the second derivative and then we explain again why there is no point of inflection. So we have our first derivative as this. So we can we can do the first derivative as this. We can look for the second derivative. We just use the quotient rule and we look for our second derivative. We keep uh, our numerator is, is 2. We just keep our numerator. Now, um, 
we, we, we keep the denominator, we differentiate the numerator minus, we keep the numerator, we differentiate the denominator, we divide it by the square of the denominator. That's differentiation. So we are going to get this in return. Now, what happens at the point of inflection? At the point of inflection, the second derivative is equal to zero. So in order to show that um, the, there is no point of inflection, we just need to show that what? This second derivative can never be zero. Remember, we had, we, we, the, the function is defined on its domain. So let's see what we are going to do. Now, this second derivative equal to zero means that x is equal to two. Because for this second derivative to be zero, then the numerator should be zero. If the, for the numerator to be zero, then x should be equal to two. When x is two, the numerator is zero. But what do we know? Two does not belong to the domain of definition of the function. Because if you check the domain of definition, it begins from negative infinity to negative one, and then it begins now from three right up to positive infinity. So two is not in the domain of definition of the function. So there is no value of x for which this second derivative is equal to zero. So we can conclude that what since two does not belong to the domain of definition, then there is no point of inflection. Now Roman six is asking us to determine the intervals where the graph is concave up and where it is concave down. So for it to be concave up, so for it to be concave up, the second derivative should be less than zero. For the second derivative to be less than zero, then we can miss this because this is the second derivative. The identity is less than zero. We can divide both sides by the negative sign, and then we get something greater than zero. Now we need to solve that inequality. So we see that what this for we we see we we see interpret a ratio. For what what does it mean for a ratio to be greater than zero? If a ratio is greater than zero, then either the the, the both numerators that is the numerator and the denominator is greater than zero, or both of them are less than zero. Because if you divide two negative numbers, you have a positive. If you divide two positive, you have a negative. But clearly, we see that what the denominator is always greater than zero because it is something squared. So it means that for this ratio to be greater than zero, then just the numerator is supposed to be greater than zero. And for the numerator to be greater than zero, it means x minus two greater than zero. So x is greater than two. So we have x is greater than two. But we need to intersect it with the domain of definition because x can be greater than two, but the there, there might be some values there that are not in the domain of definition. So when we intersect with the domain of definition, we just get x greater than 3. So for all values of x that are greater than 3, the function is concave up. Now for concave down, we do the same thing. Now for concave down, the second derivative should be greater than 0, meaning this is greater than 0. So we divide both sides by negative, the inequality sign changes. Now for a ratio to be greater than 0, either the numerator is negative and the denominator is positive, or the numerator is positive and the denominator is negative because negative on positive is negative positive on negative is negative so in this case the denominator is already positive so for this ratio to be negative then just the numerator is supposed to be negative and the numerator being negative meaning x is less than 2 we also intersect with the domain of definition and we get x is less than 1 so for all values of x less than 1 the function is concave down so clearly f is concave of if x is greater than 3 and down if x is less than 1. Alright, the second to the last part is asking us to determine the center of symmetry of the function y equal to f of x. So the center of symmetry in this case is a, is a, is a point of intersection of the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes because we have um, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So the center of symmetry is just the point of intersection of, 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 of the vertical and the horizontal asymptote in, in, in functions like this, in lean functions. Now, in this case, we have two vertical asymptotes and one horizontal asymptote. So, the center of symmetry is not going to be those two points. It's going to be the midpoint between those points. So, our asymptote meets at what? 1 lean 2, 3 lean 2. Because when x is 1, our y is lean 2. That, that was the horizontal asymptote. When x is 3, y is also lean 2. So, this, this is the point of intersection of those asymptotes. So the center of symmetry is just the midpoint of these points and we know how to find the midpoint between two points. We add the x coordinate and we divide by 2, we add the y coordinates and we divide by 2. So the center of symmetry is the, the point 2 lead 2. Lastly, we have to sketch the graph y equals to f of x. To sketch the graph, we need the variation table. Now in part 1, I explained clearly why, um, how to, to, to come up with your variation table. I'm going to explain this variation table already because I did it already. Now the variation table... It's a table that contains a domain of definition, the intercepts, and 
the, the asymptotes that's basically what the variation table is all about also the limit and the bounds all right so for x this is the, the domain of definition negative infinity to one one it was not defined between one and three because after one it jumped directly to three right up to positive infinity so that is why i i shaded this region meaning the function is not defined now one was a vertical asymptote i indicated it in black there is a vertical asymptote i indicated it in black also meaning the function can never cross all right now we need to look for the sign of f prime of x in order to get the shape of the function now in this interval from negative infinity to one we pick any value there and then we input it into the function we check the sign doing it you get a positive sign we do the same thing for this interval you also get a positive sign positive for f prime of x means the function is increasing so it means the function increases in this interval and also increases in this interval but you need to know where the function increases to and where and from where it is increasing from so it increases from the limit at negative infinity the limit at negative infinity was lin 2 and then it increases from that limit so it increases from lin 2 right up to where does it end it ends at the limit at 1 from below the limit at 1 from below is positive infinity so it means it increases from lin 2 right up to positive infinity remember there is no turning point so it does not it does not turn anywhere now we jump to 3 it increases again from what the limit at 3 the limit at 3 was negative infinity the limit from above increases right up to what right up to the the, the limit at positive infinity the limit at positive infinity was lin 2 so this is basically the variation table and from the variation table you can get the graph automatically so you see that what we indicate our asymptotes x equal to 1 x equal to 3 vertical asymptotes y equal to lin 2 horizontal asymptotes we put our 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 intercepts 5 0 0 lin 6 those are our intercepts that we found already so according to our, our variation table it says that what it increases from lin 2 right up to positive infinity so it increases from lin 2 you see it is increasing from lin 2 that is y and then it, it, it is going right up to positive infinity you see in this place y is turning to positive infinity but it crosses the, the, the y axis at this intercept next it now increases from negative infinity we see the limit at negative at, at 3 is negative infinity so it's increasing from negative infinity it gets the x axis at this intercept and it is going towards lin 2 but it never touches lin 2 since it is an intercept so basically this is a graph of my function